One of the first things we're going to take a look at is actually in-game settings. The reason you're going to want to do this is because Guild Wars 2 is actually quite unusual in this regard. In-game settings drastically affect gameplay. It's not just keybinds. It's actually some stuff that mechanically changes um, with in-game settings and can really make it easier or harder to play the game. What makes it even more complicated, actually, is that you will actually want different settings in different game modes. Little bit weird, but that's how the game works. It, it is a very diverse game, so that's not entirely unexpected. A lot of different game modes here. But the good news is we can definitely improve a lot of these settings from the default immediately. And I'm just going to kind of go for a little bit of a an overview of what these settings actually do uh, as we're going to go through them as well. Uh, because, you know, sometimes the settings don't actually tell you exactly what's going on, which I think is rather important, actually. So let's get into it. Uh, so, first up, we have our, uh, our in-game clock. Honestly, I actually like this. I'm having it on. But, you know, that, that's a clock. Very self-explanatory. Uh, also, first, actually, I'm going to do a quick detour here because the running water sound is really distracting me. Let's turn that down a little bit. So, as you can see, great demonstration of this. The environment volume is stuff like ambient sounds, right? The water flowing and stuff like that. Let's just, there we go. Turn that down. There, well, that's a little bit better, isn't it? Effects volume is, again, like your skill effects and your character, like, moaning and screaming at you. Probably want that pretty low as well. Dialogue volume, this one actually is relatively important. This is going to sound a little bit crazy, but don't mute dialogue. The reason for this is that in um, end game encounters and actually open world encounters too, a lot of the time um, NPCs, characters, will actually be telling you what to do. So they'll be instructing you on what's going on and they'll be giving you tips on how to actually beat encounters. That's true in the story as well sometimes. So actually dialogue, quite uh, a handy thing to have actually. This is basically non-player characters are going to be talking to you basically um so yeah that's actually very important there ui volume that's like little little clicking sounds basically right um when you move around with the ui you don't need that very high and player in some volumes you want to crank that up to max so that people can play really high notes right next to you but yeah you can honestly mute this a lot of the time unless you're doing this specifically there as well uh to be honest that is uh yeah you can have that pretty low as well uh and then all this stuff here as well Okay, uh, you can get rid of like a bunch of like junk sounds. Basically, there are some items that players can have that make noise, basically. <laughs> so you can just disable that here, right? And player chatter is like all the, when you gain a boon, your character might say a voice line, right? And you can disable that as well. All that kind of good stuff. I like music. I'm having the interval on low. But that's basically, that's kind of basically it. But yeah, you have a lot of customization here on kind of disabling weird noises that can happen, particularly from other players, right? You can mute other players, basically, with these settings. So they can't bother you and be uh, and disrupt your, your wonderful fishing session in peace, right? But anyway, let's get back to the... Now that we're no longer distracted, let's talk about some general settings here as well. So profanity uh, filter, this, you know, like if you don't like naughty words, boom, there it is, get that. But let's actually get to the important stuff here. Cursor contrast. This is actually kind of an alternative to using a third-party add-on to make the mouse a bit more clear. So as you can see here, the mouse is okay in Guild Wars 2, but it's still pretty easy to lose it, right? You can lose this thing pretty easily. So if you go to here, low, you get a bit of an outline. Makes it a lot easier to keep track of the mouse. You can go even further to high. A little bit ugly in my opinion. I think if you want something like this, you definitely want to have a third-party application. YOLO mouse would be what you'd go for. Just Google that, you'll be able to find it. Uh, so yeah, like off or low is probably where I'd go on this. Um, just, you know, just so you can keep track of what's going on here. Now, here we get to the really meaty stuff. This is where things get very mechanical. So, AoE loot. Normally in the game, you pick up loot one at a time, right? Like, one, you know, you get one mob, you can loot its body, and you've got to go around pressing F individually. AoE loot here. This is you can just pick up all the loot, all the, the bodies, basically. You can loot all of them in one go. The auto pickup here. Okay, it means that you uh, don't see the loot window, right? So the loot window basically is that you, you know, you interact and you'll see all the items. You can select them. Honestly, irrelevant. You don't need this. Always have this on. No reason not to. Uh, then it comes to like showing enemy names. I'd actually highly recommend having basically all of this stuff on. Um, always show my name. That's what this does. That's very much an optional thing. You can have that if you want. But have all of this stuff on the entire time, right? Um, the 
only different thing is that sometimes things can get a little bit cluttered with all of uh, loads of NPC names. But in general, doing this is going to make it a lot more clear with what the hell is going on, right? Uh, as you can see here, I can see all these different targets, all these different characters, and all these different entities. This is particularly true with this, right? Show usable object names. This is very good. You want to be able to um, see things that you can interact with because this can often be quite important. Being able to interact with stuff using the F key, right, which is the default here, and actually pick stuff up is very, very important. There will be multiple times in uh, a lot of areas of the game, actually, where you're going to want to interact with stuff that will do stuff. Simple as that. Okay, very, very good indeed. And again, always show my name. That's his preference. It does this. It can make it, you know, if you like looking at your name and how cool it is, then that's pretty good, I guess. Uh, disable closing windows of escape. I don't think you want to do that because, you know, I like the escape key. Although you can do it if you want. It's personal preference, really. Show skill recharge. This is an absolutely essential setting here. You need this. Um, because this means it's going to make it much easier to track your cooldowns. So when you're going to be able to use your abilities, it is a huge advantage to have this setting. Very, very good. Same kind of thing with target health percent. Just gives you a bit more information on what's going on. You can see that we can see this welder has 100% hit points. Just gives us a slightly clearer insight into how healthy a target is. Very, very important. Great for tracking boss phases, for example. Uh, or even, you know, potential um, health point. Uh, health point triggers when you're dealing with even other players, right? Stuff like that. Show symbol condition floaters. This is, uh, th again, this is kind of a personal preference one. What this basically does is um, there are damage over time effects in the game. And what will happen is if you have this on, um, then what it's going to do is it's going to spew out loads and loads of numbers. Looks quite cool, but maybe be a little bit less clear actually on how much damage you're doing. Whereas if you have this unchecked, you see all of your damage over time packaged into one number, which is actually very convenient actually. Uh, disable inventory compact button. Uh, this is basically to avoid you accidentally trolling yourself um, by clicking this button and ruining your beautiful inventory. What this will do is basically move... Well, wait, what? Hello? Oh, apparently it won't do that. Okay, never mind. Well, the button is not having its... Oh, I think it's because th this item bugs it out. This is like a... Yeah, this stuff here, a package of old equipment, makes this button a little bit weird. But basically what happens is, is that if you press that button, all your stuff gets smushed down and all the empty spaces get filled. Move that button if you find yourself messing up your beautiful inventory pretty much that's what it does simple as that uh here we go uh you can hide announcements uh, who cares right uh thick party health bars thick squad health bars again this is just very very good allows you to get an idea of your allies health a bit more visually a bit easier just gives you more information allows you to play the game a little bit better and the exact same thing with these two you always want to see your party health you always want to see your squad health if you don't you're going to be pretty sad uh, because you are, um, you know, you're not going to have a good time. Um, enable playtime reminders. If you're a gaming addict and you want to be reminded about how addicted you are to video games, great to have that enabled. You can actually do a lot of further customization on the UI here as well. You can hide certain things. In general, this is more of like a, a cool thing for maybe getting yourself even more immersed in the game. But in general, you typically just want to leave all of these things as always, uh, always show. Then we get to camera control here. This stuff is going to be a little bit of personal preference. The only one here that I would say isn't personal preference is field of view. Field of view, again, just like we talked about previously, it just gives you more information. So if we sc do this, you can see that we just see more, right? We, we can just see more, right? Just straight up, right? Uh, and as a result of that, very, very good setting. You absolutely want to enable this. You can see how extreme this can get, right? Look, this is our minimum FOV. You can see here that we really are not getting as much information about what's going on as this, right? Like using this larger field of view. So very important. All these other settings, uh, just play around with these a little bit. Make sure that you can turn your camera uh, nice and quickly so you can observe that without uh, straining your hand too much. All that kind of good stuff right? It's a good time, right? In general, collision sensitivity, this is not really a big deal, but yeah, you can just push it all the way to the right there as well. We'll make the camera a little bit, uh, a little bit less scuffed. Vertical um, uh, position near and far. It, technically speaking, there is actually a slight advantage to be had here in maxing this out, but I'm, look, we don't need to min-max that hard, right? Because again, just, it raises you up a little bit so you can see more stuff again, but this is a fairly minor thing. You don't really have to worry about that um, too much. Just make sure everything else is like vaguely comfortable. And you're going to be having a good time. 
Okay, and now we get to the default stuff. Now, actually, this is quite an old account, so it has some bad defaults. The default settings have actually been improved a lot um, since, uh, since this account has been made, so that's good news. But check this out. Camera shake, you don't want that on, okay? Camera shake, it's gonna make your eyeballs melt off. Um, not good, right? <laughs> not, not good. You don't want that. Uh, one of the really, really big settings here is actually free camera. Like, this is actually a huge setting. So, the thing about free camera, look, if I have free camera off, so I can do this, right? I turn my camera, with, I'm using my left mouse button to move here, right? And then look what happens. It spins around again. Free camera is actually one of the biggest game changer settings for having awareness and understanding of what's going on, right? So we turn this on and then look, look at us now, right? We can now uh, have our camera facing a different direction than we're moving. It won't pivot back automatically. This is huge. You need to have your camera like this. Otherwise, you are at a significant disadvantage um, to other players. You have so much more awareness. You can observe what's going on really, really well uh, like this. Very, very big setting here as well. First person, good for role playing. Good for some screenshot action there as well. You can have that on. All that kind of stuff. Uh, these are the settings here. They're not super consequential. You don't need to worry about them too much. You can press them if you want to. Um, uh, or not. It's entirely up to you. So, ground targeting. So, th this is actually a slightly situational one. Um, and there's an element of personal preference here as well, actually. So, what this does, this affects how you use area attacks like this. So, you can see here, right, that I've got this uh, ranged weapon. And I've got an area attack. So what happens normally, the normal setting, right? Uh, the norm, this guy's at, look, this is like, what, what a great example of the Guild Wars 2 community. Like this guy is actually trying to help me. He sent me a mail and said, uh, can I help you? And also Wisp Me Game is now jumping around me, uh, trying to help me. I've been in the game for like 15 minutes, okay? And the player is desperately trying to help me right now. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> that, that's crazy. That's actually crazy. Um, let's continue. Let's continue. So the normal behavior here, right, is we use our ability and then we use it again, right? And then that casts it. That's normal. So fast with range indicator is a little bit further. So basically... We're going to use our ability, and when we release the key, it will cast like this. So I've got my two key held down, and then I release, and it casts like that straight away, okay? Uh, and in general, this is your uh, all-round option that should be like the default. Normal, it's just a little bit slow. It's more button presses, right? It's going to significantly impact um, how quickly you're able to react to things and action your abilities there, all that kind of stuff. So this is like the general one you want to go. However, there are absolutely situations where instant is good. Um, and there's a bit of a nuance here that I, I will talk about. Like if, if you're very new, this is a nuance that you don't worry about this too much. But there is a bit of a nuance here uh, with the way instant cast actually works. So... Instant cast means I hit the button and bam, skill immediately gets cast like that, okay? Very, very cool. Now, here's the thing. There's also something called allow skill retargeting in the game. And what this allows you to do is actually change your target while you're casting an ability. Now, this has an interesting interaction with instant ground targeting. Okay, because what this means is, is that we can actually track our area attacks with the mouse and follow a target, and it will actually always hit. Uh, it doesn't work with every ability, but it does with quite a lot. So, for example, so basically take a look at this. I can have my mouse here, right? I can press the button, and I can make the area appear where my mouse is at the end of the cast. So look, we hit two. And the AoE follows the mouse, right? What this allows you to do is track your targets extremely efficiently, okay? Uh, and it means that instead of having to kind of predict your target's movement, you can actually just follow them with your mouse 
and you can always hit. This is actually really big in player versus player, actually, uh, because, of course, you're going to be dealing with moving targets a lot. Um, this obviously isn't always ideal if you have a lot of targeted abilities, because it can potentially reduce your precision in using abilities. But if you have a lot of ground-targeted um, abilities then uh, instant cast with skill retargeting is huge. It is an absolutely massive advantage to have that there as well. And actually, let's quickly take a break here to reply to this player, because th this player is such a sweetie, I, I cannot believe this. Okay, thank you, um, thank you so much for being a pillar of the Guild Wars 2 community. Okay, I don't need help. But having you, having uh, people like you around makes the game a better place. GLHF. There we go. See, he de de definitely earned that. Okay, that's uh, definitely earned that one. Okay, uh, definitely earned that one. Okay, let's... <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> Let's continue going through this. So that's kind of a thing there. A again, don't worry about that too much if you're a new player. Just go fast with range indicator, right, um, in general, uh, because that is a pretty advanced technique. But I actually think it was worth mentioning. It's important to talk about uh, because it is something that is important. And again, I, I think you can probably kind of get what I'm talking about here when I say, oh, yeah, it's really important to... Uh, use settings, right? Because settings are a big deal. That's a big deal to have that, right? Double tap to evade. This is going to be a really unpopular take. You don't want this on. If you have double tap to evade on, I know it can be fun and immersive, right? But it's going to cause you to misclick. It's going to cause you to waste your dodges, which is so important in Guild Wars 2. Those evade frames, right? Like using your active mitigation is so important. And double tap to it. It's going to make you waste it. It's going to make you burn it and move wrongly as well and kind of fall over the place. It is not what you want to do. Um, it's fun. It's immersive. It is. But you do not want to use this ability. Uh, it, it's going to punish you. Disable air effect rings. Uh, I would not do that. Seeing what your area air effects are is pretty good. I'm a pretty big fan. Double click to uh, double click to attack, interact. Um, this is kind of. I mean, no, right? You, you don't. You don't really need this. Like that's not how you're typically going to be doing it. You're usually going to be engaging um, and attacking by using your auto attack, right? You don't really need double click. You don't want to be really doing that really. Stop auto attacking on target change. This is actually a bit of a personal preference here, I think. There, if you like this, you can definitely have this on because it can be really good um, if you want to not, if you want to tab away and then to stop attacking, that can be good. But honestly, this is fine to have on as well. Doesn't really matter that much, in my opinion. Just means you're going to have to uh, hit another button. But yeah, you can have that off or on. Auto tagging. Do not have this. Okay, this is a disaster setting, okay? You do not, you do not want auto-targeting on. And let me explain why. I haven't got my key bind so I'm having to skill clip weapons. So actually, wait, what is it? What even bound to? What is that key, right? Let me show you why you do not want auto-targeting. So a lot of abilities in Guild Wars 2 are movement skills, right? So we can see here, this skill here, Leap of Faith, it's going to leap me, right? I'm going to move like this. And you might go, well, wouldn't I always want to use my skills with a target? Actually, no, not necessarily. And let me show you why. Let's imagine that I want to get away from this Mordrum Wolf, right? But if I go ahead and use this here, it's going to latch me on and make me, oh, I got, Im great, I got immobilized, right, as that happened. So you didn't really get the picture there, but I'll show it again here. What's going to happen here is if I want to leap away and run away from the wolf like this, uh, it won't let me do that. It will leap me back in, right? So you can see that what I'd actually want to do there is um, instead of have auto-targeting off, as you can see here, uh, auto-targeting off, and this means I can actually do whatever I want, right? So now, oh no, I need to run away from Mordrum Husk, right? Then, great, I can go ahead and do that. I can leap away here, right? This is very, very important that you, you, want, you want to be able to do this, that you really do. Um, so auto-targeting, definitely have that off. It's going to be super annoying um, if you don't. The game is going to irritate you. Ah, uh, here we go. Here we go. Melee attack assist. 
this setting actually isn't on by default. So if you're if you're a new player now, you don't have to deal with the horror of what this setting actually does. But I will actually go over it so that you never have to enable it ever again. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna save you. So. Basically, what this does is it enables collision with enemies in melee range, right? So you can see here, I can't... You, it's a bit buggy, but I can't walk through this elemental. You can probably see why this is bad, right? Because if you turn this off, all of a sudden, I actually can walk through the elemental. So you're literally... Having the setting on just says, I'm going to massively reduce my mobility and ability to uh, path through enemies and navigate battlefields for absolutely no reason. Again, slightly advanced tech here as well. There are actually a few abilities that benefit from using them in the hitbox. And funny enough, on Guardian, we have two great examples here, Binding Blade and Whirling Wrath. So Whirling Wrath actually fires out projectiles as well. And what you can do is that you can go inside the hitbox of an enemy and then all of the projectiles will hit that enemy for a big DPS increase. So we see this elemental, right? You can see how I'm all the projectiles... Well, I didn't do that very well. But all the most of the projectiles are hitting the earth elemental, which is going to drastically increase the damage output compared to just getting the baseline ability there uh, with the attack. So be aware of that. There you go. Uh, and let's go ahead and keep on going. Uh, through all of this. We are really getting there now. Like, we already kind of talked about allow skill retargeting. Um, this is, a, you really want this on. It just gives you flexibility, right? So, great example. Um, great example here is you can, what you can do with skill retargeting is you can change your target to not waste an ability. So, let's imagine that, uh, let's see if I can actually find a good example. I'm going to go and do a little bit of walking. Uh, but I can demonstrate this very easy. If I could go to PvP... Oh, yeah, it won't let me go to P because I'm in the level boost trial, actually. I guess I could just finish my trial, though, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and consume the trial, and I'm going to go to PvP to demonstrate this. That's probably the way to go here. Whoa, wrapped him out unlocked. Nice. That's very convenient. Hell, yeah. And that is a big thing about the level uh, the level 80 boost now. We actually get that big, huge Raptor unlock from day one. That is massive, my friends. Look at that. We're really fast now. Huge. Very convenient. Okay, but anyway, let's go to PvP and we'll talk about skill retargeting. Let's go. Yeah, I'm boosting. And, you know, we can kind of have this as a little bit while I load in here. A lot of people hate boosting in Guild Wars 2. I'm actually going to, you know, I'm going to be a contrarian. I'm going to be a really big contrarian, guys. I'm going to do it for all those on YouTube. If you want a level 80 boost, do it. Understand what you're getting yourself in for. You're kind of throwing yourself in on the deep end. You absolutely are. But it's Guild Wars 2. It's a video game. If you want to get into the action, do it. You know, if you, you know, oh, I'm kind of, you know, you played a few levels. Oh, okay. This is a little slow. Want to speed it up a little bit. You want to get to the end game, hit it. The way I'd always recommend to go about boosting is... Play normally until you get bored, right? Or you start feeling like, okay, yeah, I've got the hang of this. Now. Yeah, I've got it. I've got the hang of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here. We're here. I understand what's going on now. And then you boost. You're into the game. Boom, right? Like, the people might try and say, oh, the end game's way harder. Honestly, you'll be absolutely fine. The open world content, uh, it's not going to punish you for not playing perfectly or understanding the game exactly how it's supposed to be. You can absolutely, as a very new player, leap into the level 80 content in Path of Fire and End of Dragons. Heart of Thorns is a bit trickier, so you might have a few problems there, actually, for the open world. But for Path of Fire and End of Dragons, leap right in and you are honestly golden. Play the fresh content, play what's new, play with your friends, you'll be okay if you do feel lost you do feel stuck then great we're in guild wars 2 you can just go straight back to that starter zone and play at level 80 and kind of still have that learning experience because of course you just get downscaled you'll still be getting loot you'll still be getting experience right um for, for whatever you want to do right even if you're level 80 right so you're completely okay like guild wars 2 is a game where you kind of can't screw yourself over you can't mess yourself up. This is something that I think even Guild Wars 2 players tend to forget. You you really can't. The game doesn't let you, like, soft lock yourself. It, it really doesn't. Um, so worst case scenario, you're like, oh, man, yeah, this is too much. You know, I boosted, it's too much. I'm a little bit lost. Great. 
then go back to Queensdale. Go back to the starter area and, and keep learning, right? And go ask some questions. You're good. No problem. And that's kind of my take on boosting, right? Play until you're starting to get it, right? Or, or you know, just want to get ahead. Then hit that boost button. Get in there. Go big. Boom. Love it. Uh, this is especially true, actually, seeing as you get some really nice gear for that level 80 boost. Even if you um, have actually leveled to 80 normally, you might just want to use the boost flat out just to get this gear. Uh, this Celestial gear, which gives you all stats, is actually an excellent starter option um, for getting into um, PvE content. And honestly, even uh, World vs. World 2, which uses the PvE gear system. This is a great way to do it. Um, you, you'll have to change a few things, right? You'll tweak a few things with your, you know, with the rune, with your weapons, I imagine, right? And all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you're absolutely going to have like a nice start, right, um, with this gear. Because you can tweak it a little bit and you're good to go. So, let's actually go back to what we were talking about. Let's talk about retargeting. So basically what this allows you to do is take a skill that's either channeled or has a cast time. It doesn't work on every skill, but like Guild Wars 2 is a very consistent game. You'll learn that when you play, okay? Don't worry about that. And what it's going to let you do is let's imagine that this guy dodges or dies. Let's imagine that this, this target dies. We don't want to waste our ability, right? If we use our Sword 3, let's just look at what our Sword 3 ability is. It's Zealot's Defense. If we use that, you can see we're just firing out a bunch of projectiles at this target, right? Awesome. Fun skill, great ability. So we'll just wait till it comes back off cooldown and then use it again. And then what you'll see that we're going to be able to do is that we're going to be able to change the target from the golem here over to this golem over there. Here we go. And you can see that we fire a few off there. It dodged or it died. Let's just roleplay, right? Okay. In fact, you know what? Oh, should we go? Let's do the ultimate roleplay. I'm actually going to get this thing really low and we're going to do the exact example. Here we go. Okay. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do here is we will kill this little golem, okay? This little golem. And we will switch over to this target golem over here and not waste our skill. Because normally what would happen is you go ahead and use his ability and it would just kill this golem, right? And then we'd waste the rest of our skill. But with skill retargeting, what we can do is we can... Oh, wait, let's go over here, actually. We can do this. And it's dead, and we can not waste it. We can get more value out of our ability by retargeting it over to this golem. There it is. We did it. It's done. Very good skill. Very, very handy. High value. Um, again, bit of an advanced technique, okay? You know, so if you're a totally new player, don't worry about that. But be aware of it, right? Be aware that, again, a very powerful setting that can really enhance your gameplay. Like, the stuff like that is what's going to make the difference in you being a good player and you being an awesome player, right? An amazing player. So it's really important. I'm also leaving the PB lobby because the music here is depressing. Just like the PvP scene itself. Am I right? Okay, no, I'm sorry. Don't let me put you off playing PvP, guys. PvP is good. I love PvP. I run big PvP tournaments, okay? Promote skill target does nothing unless you have auto targeting on. You have auto targeting off, so it doesn't matter if that's on or off. Boom. There you go. Hell yeah. I actually did look. I actually didn't know what this did. I had to talk to the chat, okay? Because uh, I, I think I, I've never used this, right? So I didn't even know what it did. That is how complicated this game is, right? That's why you always need help. Always need help, my friends. Ask for help. Because you never know when you might be totally clueless. Like me. Uh... <laughs> okay. So, let's keep it up. We're nearly done. We're, we're burning through all these settings, guys. We're absolutely... Just crushing it. All right, then. So, lock ground target at maximum skill range. Very useful setting, actually. You definitely want this, because it can actually do a few things. One, it means you are, you know, you're going to be more likely to actually get your ability off. But secondly, it can actually give you a gauge of how far things are, which is actually really useful when you get into the game and you're starting to eyeball distances and radiuses and stuff like that. Radii, rather. So basically, as you can see here, just by default, my AoE will go red if I go too far away. And I can't use it. So, you know, it's going to say out of range. If I do lock ground target, maximum skill range, it will lock in this radius around my character so I can always use the skill. This means that we're going to be more reliably able to use our abilities. We know how far things away are. All that kind of good stuff. Fun fact, by the way, if you look at your ability bar, you're out of range if you see a red bar under your abilities. Right, so can you see this here? It's quite subtle. Uh, but if you look there, you're out of range if there's a red bar there. If we target that crow, you can see that there's no red bar. As the crow moves away, our abilities get out of range. 
right? And uh, there you go. You can see that we can no longer use our Chains of Light or Shield of Judgment because we're out of range of the crow. So there you go. That's how it is. Hell yeah. I love to see it. I love to see it. Okay. Uh, and then snap ground target to current target. This actually is a little controversial. I think some people really like the setting. I do not. Uh, so what this is going to do is that if you have something targeted, it will always um, cast area attacks on that target, right? So there we go. We have this chicken. And if we use it, it you can see that it will, it will automatically target the chicken, right? This can make you aim a little bit more. Uh, and it, it, on targets that never move, there's like a boss that never moves. This this can actually be okay. But if things start to move, this can reduce your accuracy. Because it means that you can't aim something off to the side, right? It means that you can't predict something's movement, right? Which can be not ideal. And it always will center your target around that. What if you want to put it slightly offset, right? So you want to cleave some other targets around there, right? So let's imagine that this crow is here. What if there's like a whole bunch of crows? Well, if I want to, you know, again, we can kind of aim at this crow, right? Boom. Got him, right? But if it, if potentially, if we'd actually had snap target, the crow could have like flown away, right? And it would, it would have survived that. So I don't like this target, to be honest. Oh, I actually had it on, actually, so it wouldn't have survived. But yeah, you, you get the picture, right? Like it can potentially reduce your accuracy, uh, allow you to kind of meme it up there a little bit. So it, it's very situational, but in general, I'd have this off. Uh, there are some situations where you could have it on in a situational fashion, right there. Uh, disable skill, uh, highlighting this, not gonna lie gamers, okay, not gonna lie, keep that on. Skill highlighting is cool, especially as a new player, because what this is going to do, um, there are a few mechanics in the game, like combos, so you can use certain abilities to create special effects sometimes, with other players even. Um, this is going to kind of express that mechanic to you, have that on. It will also tell you when to use your crowd control abilities, like stuns and stuff, because there are certain bosses that you have to stun them to, uh, to damage them sometimes, or just make them not do something to cancel one of the mechanics. Very, very important. Okay. Next up for that, competitive team colors. Enemies only. Um, enemies only is honestly fine, like, uh, in this situation. I think you can do everyone just to make it a little bit more clear if you want. Can be good in world versus world, so you really know what the hell is going on. Standard enemy models. Uh, this, again, this is a preference thing. Uh, what this actually does is that in PvP, it's going to change everyone to a standard model. Particularly, they're going to be a human character with the exact same set of armor, depending on what profession they are, right? Um, and the same weapon skins, again, depending on what profession they are. This is a competitive advantage. If you're serious about PvP, you enable this. It means you only have to learn one set of animations. Uh, the character will always be big. They won't be in Azura and smaller, so it'll be harder to see what they're doing, right? It's going to... It's going to be make the game a bit easier to play and easier to read particularly as a new player right it means you don't get to see everyone's fancy fashion wars but again it does make the game uh better right it is a it is a significant competitive advantage again and you can see custom arenas with tournament commands ranked arena unranked arena and world bus award it's going to give you a competitive advantage in those game modes um but you know if you want to see the fashion wars it's not the end of the universe right you, it's it, the game is playable without that Standard friendly models, kind of the same thing here, can reduce clutter down a little bit, can make the game a bit more readable um, on your end, if you have standard models without all the crazy shenanigans of Guild Wars 2 fashion wars, same thing. World vs. World simple nameplates, this is a big preference thing, some people like, um, uh, some people like World vs. World simple nameplates, some people don't, I personally do, basically what it does in World vs. World is that it replaces people's names with a dot. Right? Uh, there's a little dot over people instead. Uh, and that makes the game just a lot more readable, right? Uh, I really like it. I think it really reduces the clutter on the screen. Usually World of Sword is like a big 50v50 battle. It's like a zillion character names all over the place, right? Uh, I would put this on everyone just to really streamline it down. Can also be pretty good, actually, for kind of um, gauging how many enemies there are. You can kind of like count the dots and guess the dots a little bit. It's a bit hard to do that when you're guessing the names because the names kind of overlap each other, all that kind of stuff. So I do everyone. Makes it really nice and readable. That's my opinion anyway. Uh, hide territory control lines on the map. That's in World vs. World. You kind of want to leave that on, actually. It's Again, it's just more information. Information is good. Disable PvP teammate health bars. No, okay? You, you Especially, don't do that if you're a healer, okay? Unless you hate your teammates. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, Continent string. This basically, this is only, this only really applies if you are 
Um, I think it's when you're like loading the game, right? Like if you're installing the game and you're playing, um, you're playing the game while you're still installing it, um, then this will basically affect if your connection sucks like mine, then it will not stream all the time, only when you need it like on demand or always stream files and keep loading the game all the time or only when you're basically uh, not doing anything pretty much. So that's fine. Um, this is a very niche setting. Like realistically, you're, you're going to leave that on something and forget about it. It's not really going to do anything. With this one, show all commander tags. This is actually pretty good, I think. Particularly if there are, you definitely want this on. Because again, there are potentially maps, especially in World Versus, where there will be more than one commander. A commander is basically like a massive group, up to 50 players. And it's actually marked on the map. The leader of that group is marked on the map. And this is great for uh, understanding what's going on in a map, how to uh, like find people and locate people, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and the same thing. In World vs. World, obviously. Simple party UI. Okay, um, this just basically squishes down the party interface on the right. Usually you kind of see people's portraits, a bit more old school MMO roleplay style. Simple party UI squidges it down a little bit, uh, makes it more compact. I'd recommend using that, but actually a lot of particularly old school dungeon players like the old UI. So if you want to be an old school dungeon player, boom, leave that, uh, leave that unchecked. Uh, but yeah, there it is. Clear all squ um, squad markers. Clear all play squad markers using clear all commission or clear object markers. Honestly, this is good if you're a commander because sometimes you just want to clean everything up. It's a good time, right? It is a good time indeed. Disable conditional mount or, or ability. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah, technically speaking, this is good. So basically, by default, jump activates your mount special abilities. Here I am on the raptor, and what's going to happen is that when I hit spacebar, right, it will leap me forwards. Awesome. But this is actually a bit awkward, because it means I can't jump. Not, well, I mean, I can, but not, not while I'm moving, right? Okay, I can do a little normal jump, but I have to be not moving to do a little normal jump like this, okay? Uh, if I do this, then I can actually do little normal jumps like that, right? Uh, and then I can still use my um, special button, basically the dodge key in this case, to do my little raptor leap, right? Okay, so technically, this is a slight advantage in terms of your mount control here as well. Uh, again, if you like the super immersion of using spacebar, listen, don't tell them, and I won't tell them, okay? Like, just, I'll, I'll let you do it, okay? I'll let, I'll let you have it. Um, but uh, if you do want that extra precision, um, then absolutely, this is a good saying to have checked on. A little bit more precision. Simple as that. Simple as that. There you go. And then finally, we have... Uh, the camera roll on certain mount cameras. You know what? I'm just going to come clean. I actually don't know what that does. Uh, I've actually consulted something even more powerful than the wiki. Apparently, if you have this on, it might make you nauseous and make your camera all awkward. The chat has therefore said, have it off. Boom! So, that's going to do this for our general settings. Now, for graphics, I'm actually going to cheat here a little bit. I already made a really detailed video on how to get your graphics settings set up for every game mode. So instead of trying to replicate that here, I'm just going to say, go and watch that. If this happens to be on YouTube, I'll link it in the description. Maybe we'll have it pop up as well um, in the video itself. Because it's actually a really good video. Uh, and I couldn't do it better now. It's got like proper visual demonstrations. It's a good video. You should definitely have a look at it. Okay, go and have a look. The only thing that's going to be different is that DirectX 11 is on by default now. Um, so you won't have to worry about that. But everything else is basically done. You know what I didn't mention? Okay, you guys can get a bonus thing. Check this out, check this out, check this out. This is why I, this is why I love Guild Wars 2. And this is why you guys are going to love Guild Wars 2. See this motion burst slider here, guys? It literally does nothing. Yeah. I bet you didn't know that. Now you do. You literally know not it. Yeah, it is actually a useless UI element that is not hooked up to anything in any way. <laughs> so if you want to honor the spirit of Total Biscuit, then get motion blur down to nothing. Okay, just as he would have liked it. Even Anet know. They know that you don't want motion blur. So it just does nothing. <laughs> How do you say motion blur? You, th there's no motion blur. There is no motion blur in Guild Wars 2. Th this setting is useless. It's literally useless. So you can just remove it.
So yeah, you're good. You're good to go. It's, it's no problem. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so that's uh, the thing. Uh, meme. Alright, okay then. Oh! <laughs> Let's talk about keybinds. Let's talk about keybinds now. So! First of all, movement. Right? Now, the most important thing is that you have strafe bound. If you want to leave keyboard turning bound, that's actually fine. I actually do have it bound on my main. Uh, the control setup I use, um, it has A and D free. I actually should do this, by the way. I'm very lazy and I haven't changed my keyboard setup. But yeah, I actually have A and D uh, on keyboard turn and I use Q and E to strafe. That's actually true. That's how I play the game. And I've cleared all the content in the game. Do not worry. Uh, I don't actually keyboard turn when I'm playing the game because it's a pretty big disadvantage, right? But you don't actually have to have it. Um, you can you can leave it bound if you want. Not the end of the universe. And that's a hot take, but you absolutely can. But you really want strafe. So the reason you want strafe and you want to use strafe in control is because of the way you want to control the game. And I'm actually going to quickly add a few more settings here to talk about movement in depth. So we really want to have this thing called about face set up like this. We have our dodge key bound to something. We have about face. Now, what is about face? About face means that we do this. Our character turns around. But what the, it's, it's not actually quite like that. What it actually does is it turns your character to face into the camera. That's a slight nuance there, but that's what it actually does. So basically, whatever your camera is, your, your character will run towards it. Not, it won't do a 180. You, know, you can see here that my character doesn't 180 in that direction. He just runs towards the camera, right? And that's what About Face does. And the reason you want to use Strafe is because it gives you better control. So if we're keyboard turning, we're doing this, right? And that's how we're turning our character. So that's how we're turning our character, right? Uh, and that's all well and good, but we can do a little bit better than that. Specifically, we can use our mouse. So we can right-click here to turn like this. And you can see that that's a lot faster than keyboard turning, and even better, we can kind of move at the same time, which makes everything a lot easier. It kind of allows us to compact our actions together. Now, there is actually a slightly better way of doing this. And this, again, is a little bit advanced, but it is slightly better. So what you can really do here is you can move your camera, continue moving, and then right-click like that. And if you keep doing that, so basically left-click, right-click, left-click, right-click, left-click, right-click, with about facing, this is actually pinpoint precision control, right? Now, in general, you're going to be A-OK -okay just to honestly use right-click a lot of the time and pivot your camera around and move. Alongside about face, you are good to go with basically everything in the entire game. You're going to have zero issue controlling the game like this. Easy peasy. You're ready to go for everything. You're ready everything. You can use your abilities behind you like this, okay? We're having a good time, right? Like, we're doing all this kind of crazy stuff. We're moving all of this. That's great. However, just be aware that there are definitely situations where you're going to want to be moving and then pivot with very high precision. Additionally, bear in mind that this is actually the fastest you can go. If you do, if you go like this, you're always running forwards, right? If I change my character like that, I instantly turn. So my forward movement speed is always maximum. If you ever do stuff like this, you're kind of taking a curved path right? Which is potentially a teeny tiny little bit slower, but don't worry about that too much. But if you keyboard turn, right, then we're losing a lot of speed, right? Well, you can see that we're losing a lot of speed by going in this kind of lazy arc instead of pivoting a lot quicker. And that's actually pretty important, particularly when you start to get towards endgame. So you really want to be careful about that. Okay, next. Now, we are going to have to talk a little bit about backpedaling, right? Because, listen gamers, the S key is important. The S key is very important, but I am, look how slow I am, right? I am a slug. Now, this can be good. For example, I might want to be attacking a target here with my auto attacks and then spamming these attacks like this that are frontal. I, I might want to be doing that. That's actually important, okay? This is very important, but I don't always want to do that. Sometimes I want to make distance and also I can use abilities behind me. So if I'm running away from someone, I can actually use this skill, symbol of punishment, while I'm running away at full speed, right? I can use my uh, hallowed ground while running away at max speed, right? I can use my wall of reflection while I'm running away. So then I can move way faster. This means that if I'm trying to get away from an opponent, kind of kiting them out, uh, as it's referred to in games, I can go at max speed instead of actual snail pace. This is why about face and controlling your camera correctly is so important. Look, and actually, 
I'm going to say this right now. This is honestly one of the most important things you'll ever hear if you are a new player to Guild Wars 2. The hardest thing in Guild Wars 2 is controlling your character. That's not a joke. That's not a meme. That is serious. The number one thing that is going to define your skill in this game is actually control, right? It's how well can you control your camera and your character. Aim your abilities, right? Uh, activate your skills quickly. Respond to what's going on. That is actually what's hard about this game. And it's a very, very difficult thing to master, actually. Um, it's a beautiful thing. It makes the game incredibly exciting and awesome and fun and engaging. But it is very hard. And it is a really, really big learning curve. If there's anything that you can focus on, it is absolutely control, right? Camera, movement, ability usage, right? All that kind of stuff. It is so important. Let me tell you why you should do your keybinds early. Every time you change a keybind, there's going to be a relearning process. So in other words, you've built up muscle memory with a certain um, control set. And every time you change it, it's going to be hard. The longer you play, the harder it's going to be to change it as well. So it's actually really important. Get this stuff done early. I know it's a bit boring. I know we want a game. But just set yourself aside 15, 20 minutes. Okay, sit down and you're going to have so much more fun. Trust me. You're going to be able to beat the content easier. You're going to be able to access stuff way better. You're going to be able to do more. You're going to be able to do crazy plays and really super cool stuff and cool moves that you wouldn't be able to otherwise do. And every time you change something, um, it's going to have to be a reload process. That doesn't mean you shouldn't. You should actually evolve your... Um, your options. You should evolve using your different control abilities um, as you go. If you find a bit different setup, then yeah, do it. If you find that your current setup isn't working, then do it. But yeah, try and do that fast, right? When you identify a problem, boom, fix it, right? Because it really is going to enjoy your enhancement of the game. I really want to stress, this is not just like, oh, oh, uh, oh, teapot. I'm just playing the game for the first time. I want to be a sweaty tryhard. Um, you know, why are you telling me to be a sweaty tried and fixing my keybinds? Because you will have more fun. That is why. Because you're going to do more stuff. And that will lead you to enjoying the game more and having a less frustrating and more fun experience, to be honest. Right? Particularly when you get to, to wars and more endgame stuff. You know, your dungeons, your fractals, your raids, your PvP, your world boss, so on. Your difficult meta events. There are some open world bosses that ain't easy. You know, those open world bosses, they're going to kick your ass. Even some of the story, there are some bosses there that, you, you know, you're going to want to be on your toes for to make sure you can get it done. So, change stuff early. Get it sorted. It's going to be a big life changer in that regard. So, um, in terms of other keybinds, I'm actually not really going to give too much advice. The only thing I'd say is, is that if you have an MMO mouse, put loads of stuff on your MMO mouse. Because otherwise you're going to end up overloading your poor left hand. And that's not where you want to be. Um, and just play around. I don't think there's any one and done set of keybinds that are good. Just play around and make it comfortable. Make sure you're not stretching your hand too much um, on the keyboard in particular. Because again, aside from being quite impractical, that can actually cause wrist injuries. Um, and you don't want that because, you know... I like, you know, I like using hands. You'd probably like using hands. Who doesn't, right? Um, so that's pretty important. But yeah, just play around and see what you like. Uh, the really important stuff to have keybound now, in my opinion, is about face. All of the movement stuff, obviously. Dodge, uh, auto run, jumping, actually very important. Weapon swap, make sure you can use this easily. Um, really, really important to be able to do that. And then all of your basic abilities. Don't leave them on default. It's not going to be a good time, guys. You don't want that. I'm just going to set this up. My keybound binds are a little bit weird. Um, I know that it's because I play a lot of RTS games. In real-time strategy games, you use the F keys a lot. I know some people despise using the F keys, like F1, F2, F3. I actually really like it. I find it very comfortable. However, uh, if you don't like that, change it. Because it can be quite uncomfortable if you're not used to it. I'm very used to it. But change it if you're not used to it. Um, like that. And also, special action. This is a really important, uh, a really important thing to have. So when you're playing Guild Wars 2, you might get... A pop-up skill. It will pop up about here. Maybe we'll edit in a quick example of that as well. And it will be like a special thing to do with the current content that you're doing. Or like a bonus thing. You've picked up an item and you can use a special action hotkey. Often, this can be incredibly important and actually swing the encounter. The biggest example, there's a raid boss. Whereas if you don't use a special, ac special action hotkey, you literally instantly die. Okay? So that's how important that keybind is. It can be instant death. 
um, to not use this. So again, make sure you have action key in a nice cozy spot. Also here with uh, targeting, Th these are on by default. You don't really need to worry about these too much in my opinion, because they're on by default. I don't mind the default binds for target, like basically control T to take, you know, to set a target. That's fine by me. If you don't like it, you can go ahead and change it, obviously. Just make sure you have that bound, uh, for example. That's very important. Okay. Um, you can toggle a lot of settings on as well. But again, like all of this stuff is like... I. This is very self-explanatory. I just get into it and play around with it, to be honest. Get in, play around, have a good time, see what you like, see what's comfy for you. It's all very, very straightforward. You'll be totally okay with them um, getting through this. Um, the only stuff that can be a little bit... Um, a little bit um, confusing is like the targeting options. Basically, there's a whole bunch of different targeting options now because you can target allies as well and heal allies on certain builds and certain professions can do that now. Um, so there's actually two targets you can have up at the same time. Uh, but like what once you are playing something like that, you'll know how to handle that, right? So don't worry about that right now. You'll get there when you get there and you'll be able to understand it with absolutely no issues whatsoever. And of course, right at the end, uh, definitely didn't forget this setting. Definitely did not forget this setting, guys. It is, of course, going to be Weapon Stow. Weapon Stow, very, very important. Uh, you do not want to have this unbound. I would never forget that. That would be extremely foolish. I would have to be an imbecile to actually forget that. Where is it, by the way? It's in miscellaneous, I believe. Here we go. Stow draw weapons. You definitely want stow draw weapons bound. Why is this? Well, okay, what this does is quite simple. You might think this is a crazy roleplay setting. Because look, we can just stow weapons. Look, we can we can go into a town and then bam, we put our settings away. Uh, we put our settings away? We put our weapons away. Nice. But this actually has a really, really interesting feature. It allows you to interrupt your own skills. Okay? So let's say that I'm using my Shield of Judgment. Okay, like this. Pow! But oh no, I missed everyone. I wasted my skill. That's so sad. I'm sad now. And now I have to wait a 20 second cooldown to use Shield of Judgment again. Okay, well that's not too bad. But what if there was a better way? Well, it turns out there actually is. Um, and specifically, it's using Weapon So You can do this with Escape as well. But um, Weapon Stowing is slightly superior, actually. Because a lot of the time, you can trick people with Weapon Stow. Because, funnily enough, uh, Weapon Stow can allow you to actually let certain skill animations still play a little bit. Um, even if you cancel the ability. Whereas, directly cancelling the ability with Escape will actually um, sometimes uh, just cancel the animation too. Whereas, Weapon Stow, you can actually bait people out a little bit. Um, for example here as well. So what we can do is that now we're going to miss but oh no We can just cancel our ability. So I just hit my weapon so and look I didn't I didn't hit this guy because I my aim is terrible right and now instead of going on a 20 second cooldown It's a four second cooldown and then I can go ahead and BAM now we've landed our ability correctly and we've got a lot more value and you can do this with all of your aggressive abilities as well too so you know again if someone's dodging if like an enemy dodges in PvP for example then great we can stow our important ability, our immobilize, and then we can use it again. And then, bam, they haven't dodged this time, but we actually landed it, right? Uh, or we can use another really important defensive ability, like, um, you know, like something like Hallowed Ground, right? And then we can just go ahead and cancel it if we don't need to use it, right? And this type of stuff is great. This is a very high-level mind game, right? A really high-level mind game of you can bait people into dodging, and mind game people in PvP, but also just not waste abilities in PvE and so on like that, right? Very important skill. Very, very important skill indeed. But it's a great mechanical thing to have on board um, there as well. And actually, as I was saying before I uh, trolled myself by forgetting to talk about weapons though, good news. Uh, I actually do have videos talking about these basic fundamental bread and butter mechanics, actually. Um, because I always say this. I always say this stuff, guys. Fundamental mechanics in Guild Wars 2 is what is going to make the difference. And that is why I actually do have videos on it. Um, let me... Where, where's, the, where's the goddamn playlist? Ah, here it is. Uh, the playlist is here. It's called uh, the Guild Wars 2 Ultimate Beginner's Guide. It's actually a bunch of episodes covering a lot of different topics. The ones that are going to be super interesting if you want to talk about fundamental mechanics are actually specifically this one. This is one of my favorite videos I've ever made. Okay, I'm selling out, guys. I love it. This is the combat guide for Guild Wars 2, and it goes over every single combat mechanic. 
in just 26 minutes, which I think is actually pretty good, if you ask me. That's pretty quick. Um, but yeah, we go over everything, like boons, conditions, how damage works, how the stats work a little bit, movement, using abilities, auto-attacking, animations, dodge rolling, kiting, positioning, jumping, dodge jumping, troll effects. Uh, we have, wait, most replayed? What, why do people like this one? People enjoy this one, which is this, this is this like the clip where I obliterate rank 55 dragons with my uh, insane firebrand gameplay. And that is here, actually, uh, but maybe not this clip, actually. But yeah, you get the picture, right? Uh, it goes over literally everything. You can go check it out. Um, and I actually plan on expanding this. You know, the Boons video needs a bit of a reduce before Steam, I'd say. Um, and ultimately, by the way, I actually do plan on using this um, Zero to Hero as this type of new player guide as well. Really going over, like, getting into the game from the perspective of a player who's pretty fresh, just got through the story, just got into the mix, all that kind of stuff, right? It's going to be great. It is going to be great. You love to see it right? Uh, but yeah, um, I actually do have that. I should probably have that as a command in the chat, but yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, there you go. Big Nose Ted will demolish me. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, but yeah, I think, is that it for realsies this time? I think that's it for realsies, right? I think we're good. I believe we can actually play the game now. Am I right? <laughs> 